How do you stay positive having seen the absolute worst in humanity? Oh, man. Easy. I have a beautiful brunette. I'm going to do a huge alliteration here. Beautiful brunette, busty babe that's banging in a bikini that will drink bourbon with me. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, so, yeah. I have heard kids and women scream that I threw a grenade into the room that they're having their dad shoot from, um, g- get nightmares from it. Uh, yeah, I've seen doc- donkeys go down wells because the village lied to us. Yeah, I've watched bombs get dropped on entire villages where I knew that there are people, like not bad people, there were good people near bad people and watched the, all the buildings crumble. Um. I love life. I love my wife. I love my kids. I love a sunset. I appreciate art. I play the piano. I wish I could appreciate beer. I don't have a palate for it. But like everything about life is that much sweeter because I know how nasty and ugly it is. And if at any point I forgot why I fight and I forgot what right was and I forgot um, what humanity is, I'm done. The moment where I was like, I want to go kill something. I'm good at it. I'm good at war. There's nothing else I'm good at. And there's that temptation because you're good at something, you want to go do more of it, to go and spend time doing that. If I ever had that that realization that I'm actually doing that, I'm done. I'd turn my gun in. I'd go be a salesman. I'd, try, I'd sell Kias. I don't care. Now that I'm talking smack about Tia, Kias, I'm just, or Hyundai, whatever. And this is a subject that comes up that I think people want to understand in the civilian world. And you've definitely nailed a perspective that I think most guys feel. And I would say on top of that is that war, while it does expose you to the worst part of humanity in my mind forever i will i don't think i will ever see anything as moving or as beautiful as men rolling out into a horrible place day after day night after night risking their lives directly, indirectly for their country, for the civilians that are there that they're trying to protect and for each other. Yeah. And to, to go to memorial service after memorial service and realize that these are, and again, you know, I always try to remind everybody that listens to this that when I say memorial service, I'm not talking about a, a dog tag and, and some body in a uniform. I'm talking about a kid. I'm talking about a person. And a person that sacrificed everything in, in everything. Everything they are. And everything they ever will be. And so, yes... War will show you the worst part of humanity, but that right there is an incredible part of humanity. And I don't care about the politics of it, and I don't care about any of that, but you're talking about men that will give their lives for their friends. Yeah. And when I have that in the back of my mind, then that makes it very easy for me to stay positive and very easy for me to wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to do my damnedest today to live a good life and do some good things and try and honor those guys. So I don't think war makes you worse. I think war makes you better. Those services, those memorials, they're not like... Just some dude had a a young a young SF guy die, and his wife was like, you know, 
why don't you bring him back to me? You know, do you know what it's like to lose him? You know, do you know what we had? You know, you didn't know him. I was like, bitch, please. I didn't. I sat there and took it, you know? Of course. Like, what do you, th- what do you think we sit there and talk about as we're staring at a tree for 12 hours? Yeah. You know, I know what your farts smell like, woman. You know? I know what his favorite panties were on you. You know? I know every single kid, name of, of your kids, when their birthday is, you know? You don't think you think you know him better than I know him? How much time did you spend with him in the past five years? You know, day and night, sixty hours straight, taking his blood, you know, being covered in it. Like we know, like this isn't just some memorial. You know, when the sacrifices that you're talking about, yeah. it's this is a different level of you know we're talking about intimacy, the brothers, and when we say it's about the dude standing next to us. It's the it's not just some dude, you know. It's not some cliche line in a movie. Yeah. Like these are dudes. When we say we'd die for them, it's for a reason. It's because we've no never known somebody that close, and never will forever. And they're the best dudes on the planet. Yeah. You're right over there, Uncle Charlie. It's get, yeah, it's getting heavy for sure. But kind of used to it though, for sure. Used to, dude. When he starts talking, I'm just like, <laughs> "What is the next word?" There's too much space because I can't take it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, dude. Yeah. 